Uh, we on? Okay. <laughs> Russ Cook, the first man to run from South Africa to where we are now in the middle of the desert in Senegal. Is that something you've allowed yourself to feel proud about or are you waiting <coughs> until you finish the mission and run the entire length of Africa before you let yourself feel that way? Yeah, so I, I don't think um, really, is, I don't think feeling proud is, is an emotion that I'm really trying to let in right now. <laughs> um, we've still got the Sahara Desert to run across, like four and a half thousand kilometres and, you know, a lot of work to do so I don't think it's really any time to be feeling proud yet. Maybe it. at the end I might think about it, but not, not yet. I love that. Yeah. So before we get into the, the journey so far and everything that we're going to talk about today, something that I'd love to touch on because I think, you know, obviously I've known you for quite a few years now, a lot of yeah. people following, they might not know the backstory. And to quote you yesterday, you referred to yourself just a few years ago as more of a typical lad. Yeah, yeah. So for anyone thinking that maybe you've always been into extreme stuff like this, let's go back to your early 20s, if that's all right, Russ. Talk yeah. me through that. Yeah, mate. So um, definitely typical lad, I would say, you know, from, uh, we're all from Worthing. It's, you know, pretty run-of-the-mill kind of town in England. And um, the, the life I was living in then days was, you know, living for the weekend, loved the beer down the pub a few nights a week, um, did a lot of gambling, which which uh, caused me a few problems. Um, just honestly, look, kind of like directionless and quite quite empty really, you know, just surface level, living for fun moments and then waiting around for another fun moment to come. Yeah. yeah. I think you, you've actually done a lot of amazing challenges leading up to this one don't you which again maybe not everyone is aware of so i mean talk me through like what was that moment when you decided this standard life early 20s and worthing going to the pub every weekend what was the moment where you were like yeah I, I, there's a bit more here for me yes yeah, so i think um a, a big moment for me was when uh, a, a mate of mine that you boys all know i think jordan core said um like he he came and got me to run a half marathon. He basically said like I'll like come and do this. I think it'll be good. Blah blah blah, and like forced me out the door. Did a bit of training with him, and we did a half marathon. A few few weeks later, did a full marathon, and it was that process that <clears throat> that it was the start of that process where things really started to change. I think for me, like I, I started looking, seeing there was a different option. I didn't have to live this life that I was kind of had been living for a long time and started seeing the potential like within myself to go and push myself do do something difficult overcome something that i didn't think i could um and you know all, all the lessons that i learned through that marathon training process ended up kind of just snowballing gathering momentum until i decided that like you know fuck it i don't have to stay in here and do this these boring jobs that i've been doing i can i can quit everything and just go and like see the world a bit and that's what i ended up doing class yeah jordan core what a boy what a boy great Big lad, shout out great lad. how much resistance was there from you when he asked you to do that first half marathon i think it, it'd probably come at a pretty good time because i think there would have been a lot more resistance in previous years but i'd got to the point where like i was unhappy enough and i'd been unhappy enough like banging my head against the wall going down a direction of life that I knew was not making me happy. I was kind of looking for an, like an alternative. I was like, someone like, I need, I need to see something else. Um, so I think it was, I was like fairly, fairly receptive to it. I had nothing to lose, like literally nothing to lose. So, um, you, you know, I thought like, might as well give it a bash, you know? Yeah, mate, great yeah. attitude. And what, what year was that? Cause it wasn't that long ago, was it? So I think, <coughs> God, the years kind of get mixed up in my head now. I think this was, I want to say, how old am I now? 26. This would have been when I was about 20, so 2018-ish. 2018-ish, yeah. And then after that first marathon, when you got the bug for it a little bit, yeah. what, were the, what were the next set of challenges that came up? So, I mean, I ran a marathon and then I literally never stopped, never really stopped training. Um, if anything, the marathon just made me go even more like tunnel vision, really started just training loads, running loads. Then I went traveling, met some really inspiring people that were, were training really hard as well. And, you know, at that point I started just, you know, the spiral of confidence that it had given me, I was like, I can do fucking anything at this point. And um, that, that summer I, uh, 
I flew to Istanbul and decided to run home from Istanbul. Did um, 70, 71 marathons in 66 days, I think it was. Uh, and that was kind of the start of doing like big challenges and things. And at that point, I had no idea like I didn't re really know how I was going to like fund any of these things. Like the way I funded that mission was went into a, a um, clinical trial in Sydney and just fucking let them just pump me full of shit and pay me a load of money for it. So, you know, I was working jobs here and there, paid for it doing that. And then I finished the Ages of London run and thought like, wow, that was such like incredible experience. I'd love to try and do this more. Mm. I'd love to be able to focus more of my energy on it, but it costs a lot of money and I don't know how I'm going to be able to ever afford to really do it properly. And then, you know, from then kind of went on a, f a four year journey of trying to figure out more of the like practical elements of like, okay, if you want to do this kind of thing properly, then you're going to have to think of like, how, it's, how is it going to get funded? All of these type of things. Um, you know, like making content, maybe we can get sponsors on. And then it's like, you know, eventually it took like four years for me to kind of figure it out, but that's, we got here eventually, you know. Yeah. yeah, that became very apparent yesterday when we were running and chatting business. Yeah. You've, 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 learned, you've learned some yeah. business acumen along the way, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, like, it was never my intention from the start. Like, I would never have really seen myself doing any of that kind of side of things. Like, I just wanted to do, I just wanted to have go on big adventures and, do, and like just get up to mad stuff and train loads and all the rest of it. But you know, a huge part of it that probably people don't really see is that there's like a whole business that's operating to make this happen. You yeah. Know? Before we get into that, you've got an amazing team here. Yeah. You've got some amazing brand sponsorships, and obviously we've got a whole continent that you've run across to, to discuss. Yeah. But going back to that, when you were in your early 20s, for the lad listening, all the women listening that is kind of in that same position that you were, feels like they were stuck in a little bit of a cycle. Yeah. And okay, they maybe don't want to run across Europe yeah, yeah. Or, or Africa, but they want, to, they want to try something, whether that's running or not, and they feel like they're stuck in that cycle. What, what would you say to that person? God, man, that's a good one. Um, it's, re it's really difficult because I think it's, it's such an individual thing um it's it's kind of hard to speak to 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 like everyone on that point but um i do think that sometimes what is really helpful to do at that kind of when you feel like you're that in that moment of life is like just zoom out like just zoom out for a bit i think we can all get quite like narrowed in on like oh i have to do this or i have to live like this or this is what i'm doing and like a few years go by and you're like fuck me where did i do with my yeah. life there um, and I think like zooming out and asking yourself the question of like, what do I actually want out of life? Like, you know, what, what's important to me? What kind of person do I want to be? And how can I try and like make that happen in a more like a first principle point of view is never a bad place to start. I think, you know, like trying to work out what you actually want. Um, and then like try and strategically step by step move a bit closer, but Fuck, man, this take this stuff takes years, you know. Like I'm, I've not figured as much, a lot of this out um, myself, and um, you know I'm like five years deep into this stuff. So I think I'd say like zoom out, like take positive action towards living a life that you want to do, uh, like that you want to live, and like get ready to be patient because it's going to take a while, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but it's the pursuit of that ultimately, you know, which is also has a lot of meaning in itself. Yeah, I love that about the process. Yeah. That's such an important question to ask. I love that life. You woke up tomorrow and you were 60 yeah. and your whole life had been how the last two to five years had been. Yeah. How would you feel about that? And it, let that feeling sit in. And if yeah. it's not a good feeling, then it's probably time to make a change. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Um, no, I couldn't agree more, mate. What you said about the, the pursuit though, I really love that. I think something you said yesterday, which was really interesting was, you've actually got more questions the longer yeah. you've done this journey. Yeah. So I feel like you've gone on this journey of kind of self-discovery, self-awareness, somewhere along the line, which I'd be interested to hear more about as well. It's got quite philosophical and stoic. Yeah, yeah. And you actually feel like you've maybe regressed a little bit in, in that, that way, in a sense, is what you were saying yesterday. Yeah, I feel, I, well, I think in terms of like, and, and, and you know what, I'm not even sure. I think part of it is that there's so much that's gone on in my own head for the last nine months 
that I'm not even sure anymore that I'm like in the best position to like even reflect upon my own journey anymore because mm. it's just it feels like I've gone like it feels messy in a yeah. lot of ways but I, th I think when I was talking about like regression I think what I what I was kind of referring to is that the last nine months has been so chaotic and like very difficult for me personally like I've just found it very difficult that it's been really hard to maintain a sense of like inner peace with all of that um, and I just think like from a spiritual point of view that's where I'm talking about regression in terms of like I was much, I, f I found it much more easier to come to circle back to a point of peace when there wasn't so much ha that I had to deal with um, going on in my life but also that's not necessarily a negative because I think you know that challenge was maybe necessary and I think will will benefit me a lot hopefully in the future so it's just part of the process man do you think that's partly due to the amount of external variables that you can't control here so if you're running across Europe it's probably a little bit more straightforward right there's, yeah. there's less less you know additional things that could go yeah. wrong less opportunities Massive. for crisis yeah less opportunities for visa issues so you can probably maintain a more internal calm state yeah versus being here where there's always a hundred things out of your control there's so, there yeah, i think that's probably it mate to be honest like there's you know when i ran through europe for example everything is everything is in my hands uh like all of the problems i can kind of like juggle them you know, fairly like that. They're okay. I know we got this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. But doing this project has just been like, fuck, bro. There's so many problems. Bro, I've um, been here three days yeah. with problems. <laughs> um, every time I feel like one problem, then the other one starts, you know. And like, uh, a lot of these things are just from a, a competency point of view. I'm not always at, like, I'm not always have, I don't always have the ability to deal with them, which makes it even more like, you know, fuck, I'm out of my depth here a bit, I'm out of my depth here a bit, and uh, so that that can, like, it's quite hard to manage, yeah. I guess. Do you, did you feel like you needed that, though, maybe subconsciously? Is that why you chose Africa? Like, Europe was yeah. a challenge that you, you'd conquered, and you were looking for something that was just going to be more difficult. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, I knew, like, I think um, I knew Africa was going to be, a, was, was going to be difficult. Like, no one's ever done this before for a reason. So I did like it was one of them where it's like I'm going into the unknown and I know this is going to be difficult. But then you know when once you actually walk those steps and you fucking take them, then it's like oh yeah, giddy up, fucking cowboy. That was tasty, you know. And it's still not over yet. <laughs> yeah, not even still. Got quite, <laughs> still got quite not a way. Close, yeah. What was the when you chose Africa? What what was the ultimate goal? Like what were you looking to get out of it from a personal? <coughs> level like putting the charity aside and all yeah. that other amazing stuff that, that we'll get to what personally were you looking for when you set off on another one of these oh, mate i think there's so many different things that go into the there's so many different slices of the pie there um it's kind of it's it's, it's hard to really f contemplate what it was at the start i think you know ultimately i wanted to challenge myself i wanted to try and overcome something extremely difficult um i you know I, I identified identify myself as being that kind of person so this seemed like a big opportunity to do that you know like no one's ever done it before so that 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 in itself is something like that gets me going um you know i think also just like the opportunity to try and like fulfill my potential like really push myself try and do some good along the way uh you know try and inspire and motivate maybe other people to take on whatever journeys probably not going to be running the length of africa but like fitness or whatever it is like the people are passionate about like trying to uh spread that message and 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 do that is also something i think it's like a lot of value in me trying to do that so there's there's a ton of different things man um I think maybe one thing that underpins them all is just like, I just fancy an adventure. I just want to look back at the end of my life and say like, that was carnage, you know, like didn't waste it, didn't waste that, you know, had a good one. 
So I think that's maybe the biggest one of it all, really. Yeah, so the main driving force is you don't want to look back and feel like you had regrets that you could have done more, pushed yourself more, yeah. found those boundaries. Yeah, I, I, like, yeah, I think that's, you know, that's it. Like, le like legacy, like, want to have a big family and, you know, want to be able to be a capable and competent person that has a lot of things to pass down, you know? Don't want to just fucking have kids and then just be useless you know yeah we were speaking about that yesterday a lot as well weren't we identity like being a good parent like leaving something behind for your kids yeah i find i find that just really interesting you know there's a lot of similarities there so i really enjoyed that chat yeah is there anything in your earlier life that you can point to that made you think okay this is where this kind of mindset has come from in terms of wanting to be a good dad and leave something behind for for the, for the kids yeah I, th I think um do you know what i think is interesting is i think when i when I was younger, I would always, I would probably be more willing to talk about like the negatives of my upbringing. But when in reality, you know, my, like, I think my mum and dad did a, did a great job. And um, like, you know, I remember my dad going out, um, like I, when I was a young kid, I barely saw the bloke because he was working 13, 14 hours a day, going out, coming home, he'd cut metal all day, he'd come home dirty, knackered, like, my mum would be looking after, she had three boys, you know, dedicated her whole life to raising three lads, and, um, you know, so I think there's there's a lot there that I think, you know, I, I admire a lot in, in what they did for us, and, um, you know, I think I would just love to be able to take what I've learned and, uh, you know, pass that on to my kids as well, you know, just... I mean, there's so much I don't know. I think that's what it's, that's the trouble, you know. Like, that's one of the things that we spoke about yesterday. It's like the more I learn, the more I'm like, fuck, I'm stupid. Yeah, I know nothing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but now, nah, mate, I can't wait to have kids. Really yeah. excited, yeah. Really excited. It's been a common theme that of our conversations has been very aware that you don't know what you don't know and therefore you're searching for more. Yeah. Do you ever think you'll get to the point where you're happy or do you think you'll always be searching for more? Mm, f you know, probably not. Uh, and I, probably not. Um, I think there does, you know, there is scenarios where you kind of have to, you have to take action. You can't just sit back and say, I don't know, so I'm not going to act. Like you have to go, well, this is what I do know. So I'm going to act with what I've got. And it might be wrong, but it was the best thing I could, it's the best thing I can do at this time and I think that's really important and I, and I really don't want to be the type of person that gets stuck in this whole sense of like oh I don't know so therefore just fuck it off yeah um, but also I think it's really important like it's really important for myself to try and keep my eyes open to to areas where I could be wrong you know, like I don't want to just close myself off and go like, right, I've thought about this and I'm right and it doesn't matter. It's like, there's so many, there's so many people that are so smart and have concentrated a lot of energy in certain areas that I could learn from and I, and I want to just try and stay open to these things as well. Do you feel like you are a bit different? What, now than at the start? Or? Versus most other people? Uh, I guess so. The evidence points towards yes, <laughs> I guess. Um, I think like I'm different, but also like pretty normal in a lot of ways. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you think? The there's, I mean, there's the craziness of doing all of this, right? But even just talking to it, it's obviously a lot more subtle, right? It's not jumping out like he's running the length of Africa, but there's the subtleties of this, like constant search for like being better wanting wanting to do better wanting to be challenged to make sure what i think is correct mm. you know have you ever heard the saying we we challenge all of our beliefs except those that we truly believe mm. and except those that we don't think to question mm. which basically means we challenge none of our beliefs mm. but you're in this constant pursuit of like what well, my beliefs challenged am i right looking for more information i'm good don't want to have regrets about n not being the best possible you know partner to your girlfriend father to your kids mm. um, i find that level of of self-awareness and, and introspection quite rare for anyone but probably additionally rare for a 26 year old <laughs> yeah uh yeah, I guess so, man. I don't know. Um, no, it's interesting. 
Well, we've got plenty of tarmac to yeah. continue thinking about. Yeah, don't we? mate, so that's spent a lot of time. Got a lot of time oh, thinking about it. We'll, ca we'll carry this on, and we can always always edit in if we come up with any answers. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. You, you spoke a lot about obviously the you know what you were looking to get from this trip, the lessons learned, and what you're looking to pass on to to your kids. So, what things from this trip, or just all of your challenges that you've done, mm. what kind of experiences, lessons, mindsets are you looking to make sure that you have solidified as a father so that you can install in your children? Uh, fuck, bro. Um, that's a good question, man. I think, um, you know, one, um, there's a few things that I think are really important. I think discipline is really important. Um, you, you know, like, uh having having the ability to do what like what you don't want to do but you know is the right thing to do i think is is powerful um i think uh, you know pro I, probably one of the biggest lessons i would try and pass and, I, and i'm no way mastered this myself but one of the biggest things i would love to pass on to my kids is just like the ability to come to come to any given situation in life with like love set big centered in grounded in love so you know like pe people uh for example like it, I, I, I think that's just a if they can do that they can hold truth within them and and like for whatever storm of life comes and they come and they're fucking brutal like if you can hold that center of truth and love then you're kind of well equipped to deal with anything. So I think that would be like my overriding message. Like that would be like what I'd love to try and give them the most. But there's loads of other, you know, like these lessons about discipline and going to do things that are difficult, um, being compassionate. You know, these are all like, there's t fucking tons of lessons. There's never ending lessons, you know. For a man that doesn't have kids yet and they're not on the immediate horizon, yeah. you do seem fairly concerned with obviously being the best father possible and doing things now that set you up to be a great father. Yeah. So that kind of makes me quite interested, if you don't mind me asking, to yeah, hear yeah. about like, the relationship that you had with, with your father and, and how was that growing up and how is that now? Um, <clears throat> but, um, Yeah, I mean, look, it's a difficult one because I'm kind of like, uh, I think my dad, I heard, I heard someone talk about this um, the other day. They said that you have go through different stages with your dad where like when you're a young boy, you see your dad as a hero. And then uh, and then like when you get to like teenagers, you see him as a villain. And then like when you get a bit older and you turn into an adult, then like you see him as a human. Mm. And I love that. Um, that really was powerful for me because I think that's something that I've gone through a bit with my dad where, you know, when I was a kid, I saw a man going out working 13 hours a day, 14 hours a day. He ran, he ran a couple of marathons when he was younger and I'd be like, what? he had big muscles and that. he went to the gym. And I was like, my dad is Superman. <laughs> and then you get a bit older and you kind of start looking at the things that you wish you maybe had a bit more from your dad. Like I felt like maybe I could have, could have benefited from more from like a, some more guidance when I was, in these teenage years where I kind of started doing stupid shit and started, I had a lot of questions for the world and I didn't, wasn't feeling like I was getting any answers and I was going, trying to seek these answers, but in not very good ways, not very productive ways and quite destructive ways in, in, in a lot of the time. And, you know, you kind of, I think, blame people for that. You know, you're like, oh, you should have been there. Like, you should have been telling me this, you should blah, blah, blah. But then you like start getting a bit older again and you're like, he was just like I'm the the age that he was when he had me. Like he didn't know what he didn't know, and I, you don't know what you don't know. So like, you, you, I start looking at it more from like a where's the man's heart at, and like where are my parents' heart at, and I go, you know, they fucking love me more than anyone else in the world, and sure they made mistakes. I've made plenty of mistakes. I'm going to make plenty of mistakes when I'm a dad, and like being like hostile to the point where you're like, oh, they should have done this. Is just actually not so, grounded in love and not grounded in truth it's it's unnecessarily hostile and um you know that that's i think that's kind of where i'm at now you know love that yeah i see where the, the kind of the pursuit of being the best version of yourself then comes from because 
you've obviously got the compassion to realise that your dad was doing the best that he possibly could. Yeah. But you don't think it was as great as it could have been and you obviously therefore don't want to be in that same situation. Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably something that I guess a lot of us battle with with our parents, isn't it? You know, I think that's just journey of life. You go, and, that, and that's also like, I think it, that's our responsibility and my responsibility as a father, as a man, will be, you know, these are the cards you got, try and make them even better, pass on better cards. And I think, you know, I look at my granddad and what he, the cards he had and what he did and what he gave my dad and then what the cards my dad had and what he passed on to me, you know, they've both done that. So they've, they've, they've succeeded in their objective to fucking better what they were given. And now like, it's my responsibility to do the same when I have kids. Yeah, I love that outlook. Yeah, that's awesome, mate. Yeah. I think that's, that's, if you look at the objective that way of, yeah, like, has the next generation done a little bit better, had it a little bit easier, yeah. or had the ability to choose harder on purpose because yeah. it was easier by default? Have they have they done the, more opportunities? Yeah. yeah, more learnings. Yeah, that, so I think I spent a, a lot, a decent amount of time stuck in the like, my dad didn't do this and didn't do that or whatever. But it's just the wrong way of looking at it. It's easily done. I yeah. did the same, mate. Yeah, yeah. My dad left before I was born, so it was very much a case of. Yeah, victim mindset. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, it gets to the point where it's like, well, this isn't serving anyone. Yeah, so yeah no, I think that's all. It, yeah, it. it's just like who, what you, what's, what are you achieving from, from that? I think like it's, like the feelings might be valid. Yeah, like I'm sure they are. You know, but is that going to better you? Is that going to better them? Is that going to better anyone? Um, so yeah, no, I agree, man. Just comes a point where, I think there comes a point in. A lot, of, a lot of our lives where you got a lot. Stop blaming other people and start looking inside because that's where the answers are. You know. Yeah, I love that. I think that sets the the tone so nicely for kind of like how have you ended up here? Yeah. <laughs> in the middle of a fucking yeah. desert, right? Yeah. I don't think we need to talk too much about the the trip because obviously people are watching the vlogs. They're getting a lot of their questions answered as they go. Right. We've got some questions that we're going to go through, which are obviously mostly about the trip. Yeah. But. One thing I'd love to ask you is yesterday we were speaking a lot about kind of like your evolution along this trip. Obviously, you've been in Africa for a long time now. Mm. You're probably not the same person when you started. Yeah, and you were telling know. us about some of the some of the lessons you've learned, some of the mindset shifts you've had internally, how you deal with other people, which I found really, really interesting. So, yeah, yeah like what would you say is the biggest change you've noticed in yourself or the biggest lesson, the biggest growth that you've experienced since starting in South Africa? <coughs> I think... Um before I started, I was I was quite aware of how inexperienced I was in like leading any kind of group of people, or business, or anything in like this. Uh, and I was quite I was quite like, oh shit, I'm going to be out of my depth here. I'm going to make some mistakes, and this is not probably not going to go very well. And I think that's probably happened in a lot of ways. Um, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, there's one or two stories. Yeah, like I think that has happened in a lot of ways. Um, but I think there's been a lot of learnings there for me in terms of like, you know, how how to like how to run a business. What what like what am I? Even if anything, it just makes me question like what are my what are my values more? Like it makes me think. It's, it's made me like readjust some of my values and been like, oh, I, you know, I was maybe a little bit too idealistic here and, and not, I, I, was, I was valuing this for the wrong reason and, and it's kind of just made me realign a few things there and I, you know, I've learned, I think, how to lead better, hopefully, how to communicate a bit better and also how to manage my own boundaries in a lot of more effective ways but i am by no means an expert <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is, is there any kind of specific examples you can give where some of those values as you've said were a bit idealistic and actually didn't serve you or you didn't respect your own boundaries and it became counterproductive because obviously i know you i know you to be a really nice person you don't want yeah, to let yeah. anyone down you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings so i can see why that sometimes would be a problem if you kind of made that short-term sacrifice of like trying not to hurt someone's feelings or do right by them but actually that was problematic for the bigger picture yeah i think um it's one of them where I don't think, especially because the project's not even over yet, I'm not, like, I don't really feel too comfortable speaking about 
specifics in terms of like people um but you know there has definitely been situations i think where um you know maybe i've been too allowed myself to be too heavily influenced to do something that i was was against my intuition or against what i was what thought was the right thing to do and they're always quite they're always quite bitter pills to swallow because uh like you had you had you know yourself like you had the answer and you were basically too pathetic to follow it through you know that's kind of true shit and i think there's been some a lot of like learnings in that where it's like, all right you know being being nice or being doing what you think might be the pathetic thing or the nice thing isn't actually always the case you know there's there's a lot of long branches that go, you have to go down and there's, you know, it's just made me think probably more in depth about, you know, if you make this decision, this could happen, but also this, 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 and this, and this could happen. And like, as the leader, as someone that's leading, you need to like really contemplate all everything that's on the table. Yeah, that's super important, that's, yeah. especially when you're in an environment like this. Yeah, uh, mate, it's, it's it's like a, you know, it's, it's it's intense and there's not really time to pull out and think about things. So it's like, a, you got to do have to just come to the peace with the fact that sometimes I am going to make the wrong decision, but I'd rather, you know, I'd rather that occasionally than, than act in like directionless motions. You know? Yeah, because indecision is still a, still a decision, yeah, right? exactly. I'm yeah. Tough lesson for that. Yeah. Yeah, fucking a. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Honestly, a lot of times, it's that's what it is, though, isn't it? Like, and even that, it's like indecision also increases your anxiety because you know you've got a decision to make. It increases your stress because you're like fucking hell. So sometimes it's just, you know, make the call with the best judgment you've got at the time and fucking make peace of the fact that it might be wrong. Yeah, I love that, mate. Commit for the decision. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about some of your, your future plans? I know nothing's set in stone. Right? Yeah, yeah. I know you've got some ideas of kind of how you'd like this challenge to translate into that legacy that you mentioned earlier in terms of giving back and creating opportunities for other people. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to hear your updated thoughts on those because that, to me, is incredibly exciting. Yeah, so, um, again, something I probably can't go... I, haven't, I can't really go into it just because I don't actually have the proper plan formulated yet, but... Um, something that's always been that's always stuck with me is that you know like running and adventure were two things that were were two tools that really enabled me to switch up my life and get the best out of me and if if there's other people out there that that feel like they could benefit from that from that then i would love to make these two things more accessible and easier to those people um so I got I got a lot of ideas and I'm really excited about about them. But you know, I, what I will say is hopefully I'll uh, create some some things, some movements that will be able to get people be able to make that happen. And I think that's lo- it's looking good. So um, you know, we'll see. Fingers crossed. That yeah. For me, there's quite a clear correlation between the, the people that I'm friends with that are like pushing boundaries and living their le- best life. And they're the people that are traveling the world and putting themselves in new environments, new experiences. Yeah. And so uh, selfishly, I'd I love to hear, you know, your, your plans with that because I feel very lucky that my upbringing involved. I think I said to you, my mum like, took me to India when I was like one. Yeah. Uh, I'll love a second. Right. One second tap. All you girls are always filling some, filling some time. <laughs> What do the team get? What do the, what do the team get up to in between in between runs? <laughs> Tough day. Yeah, when, I think I was about one when my mum took me to India for like six months. Yeah, she said that this one day we were there in this little beach hut in Goa, the ceiling collapsed in. The python had given birth. Yeah, there was like a python and all of its babies 
on the beds. Yeah. Um, and Having a little gobble at, li at baby at Leo. Baby Leo. Yeah. <laughs> Blonde hair at the time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, very, very fortunate. You know, it was interesting going back for that, you know, childhood victim mindset. I had such a bad relationship with my mum, blaming her for so many things. Yeah. But in hindsight, by the time I was 16, I've been to 16, good thing. Better pubs in the pub chips. Yeah. Got the bus at a time. And, uh, and yeah, you know, that, that, that shapes me. I'm quite happy with all person I've taken that. Yeah, no, and that's you are, but you've got, uh, it all comes down to fitness, safety shoes, yeah, fitness, um, I've traveled, you think, you know, to various different cultures and places. So yeah. I'm excited to see what works. Well, I think it's one of, one of the things that I find really interesting about it is that like, uh, I think as like a 20 year old or as like a young person in general, it's quite hard to tackle these like, big questions in life about you know like whatever it is like philosophically and I find that like fitness running adventure are a great kind of like a for lack of a better word like a gateway drug into just thinking about things a little bit more and working on yourself a little bit more um, and it's just like the most simple it can literally be the most simple thing like putting on your shoes running shoes and going for a 100 meter walk or even just putting on your running shoes and walking out the front door and walking back you know like that's that's these are the type kind of little things that you can start with so um you know i would it would just be like a privilege to be able to try and help people take that step you know there's a woman i'm friends with she's our age and she put on insta stories the other day um, first time flying by myself, she was going on a trip by herself. Yeah. And I was like, I love that. Good yeah. For you, but also like, how? Yeah. And I think that you do sometimes forget that not everyone has that same like, courage, maybe for whatever reason, right? Everyone's had very different upbringings, views the world through very different lenses, which is absolutely fine. But it was kind of mind blowing to, 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 to me, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, creating something for people that don't necessarily have that same opportunity to experience fitness and, and travel, I, I know it's going to be genuinely life-changing for a lot of people, so I Hopefully, can't wait man. to see what it is you build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens. There's endless options. Yeah, there is. You're but we've got a Sahara Desert to get Yeah. <laughs> it will happen. <laughs> Should we get into the questions? Yeah, let's do it. I understand. Um, do you want to touch on any updated thoughts and feelings in the Algeria situation? Uh, when's this going to go out? Lloyd? I mean, it day, take a few day turn around, won't it? Um, Two days. Yeah. I'll speak loosely about it. Yeah. So like, you're... we've obviously put the message message out um, that we needed some help getting Algeria visas, and we haven't got anything sorted yet. But also, things are looking. We got we got a couple of promising leads. So things are looking strong at the moment. But obviously, not in a position yet where we can say like. Science Hill delivered, we got it sorted. But fingers crossed, we'll make it happen. I love that. I've got genuinely a really good feeling about it. Yeah. I'm going to start with the two questions from Cam. Yeah. Uh, the reason being is that Cam Reynolds was meant to be on this trip with us. Yeah. And unfortunately, due to obviously the delay in getting it, it yeah, booked yeah. in, he got a new job and, and couldn't. So, uh, Cam, I'm very sorry that. You're not here. All you've missed so far has been stress and food poisoning. <laughs> so to be honest, it's the real Project Africa the, experience worked out for the best. But um, Cam asked the following two questions: If you had to hide a giraffe from the government, where would you hide it, and why? What government? The British government. Yeah, let's go British. Okay. If I had to hide a giraffe from the British government, oh, I'd fucking take it abroad. Smart. <laughs> Fucking smart. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to hide a draft from the government, from the British government in the UK, fucking a. I reckon West West Highlands. It's, it's about as, as as scarce as it gets. Irish, you can get in. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking chuck him up in a little mountain. Out of sky. Mountain hut or something. Yeah. There's not many trees there though. It'd be quite obvious from the air. Shit, yeah. That's a, wow, what a question. That's a deep question, I can Which makes sense, because- If I had to hide a, a giraffe, could I, could I kill the giraffe? I could maybe just kill it, chop it up, and then keep the meat in the freezer. He doesn't say anything about the giraffe needing to stay alive. Exactly. Man, that's 
good thinking. You're not playing checkers, I'm not playing chess. That's boy. fucking right. <laughs> What's the biggest animal you could take in a fight? Biggest animal I could take in a fight? The, the answer pre-mission and right now have two different answers. I think pre-mission, I'd have backed a wolf. I'd have gone, yeah, no problem. I have a little gobble on a wolf. Right now, seven-year-old girl starts and I'm fucking knees are buckling, mate. I'm in bad shape right now. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> that guy yesterday that drove into you, this guy yesterday drove into Russ, yeah, smashed him on the side of the road and Russ stood there and... Yeah, he pissed me off. <laughs> It was bigger than a seven-year-old girl. Yeah. I was just verbal. So I was all verbal, mate. Sorry, all verbal. Like, if he know, wants it, I'm fucking... You. I'm like, shit. Yeah, that's right. I'll stand there. <laughs> <next day>. Yeah. <laughs> so something between a wolf and a seven-year-old girl. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Depending on, you know... Depending on the day. Depending on how, how the hip flex is shaping up, you know. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, Nigel asks, do you wipe your bum stood up or sat down? Good question, Nigel. Good question. Um... So this is also dependent on how bad the legs are because in an ideal world, I, I hold the squat and wipe in the squat. But sometimes the legs are just cooked, bro. So then in that case, I would have to stand up and go for the stand up wipe. But, but the, the, the sit down wipe is way more efficient, in my opinion. But what's interesting about this question is yesterday you proposed a business idea to us and I wasn't sure there was a market for it, but... Clear market. So it's the poo sling. You know, you go for the nature poo, everyone that does nature poo will know about this. You go for the nature poo, you sit in a deep squat, but obviously after a bit of time it gets a bit heavy on the old leg. So you get a tree swing, takes the weight off you and allows you to enjoy your nature poo experience. I'm coming to you soon. That's, yeah. a, ne that's a Nexus exclusive. <laughs> Uh, Kevin asks, will you be watching the Africa Cup of Nations matches with the locals? Uh, haven't haven't seen anyone watching them yet, um, but I am keeping a little eye, little side eye on the Africa Cup of Nations. Um, I saw Algeria played Mauritania the other day and got beat one nil, which was not good news for us. But no, you want the Algeria officials in the best move possible. Yeah, don't exactly. You? But they're locked out now, so far. All right. Thomas asked two questions. The first one I actually kind of asked you at the start, so maybe not too much more to add, but he said, has it started sinking in yet that at this point you are almost guaranteed to succeed at the mission? It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, not quite. Nothing's yet. guaranteed. Look, uh, I'm, I'm almost entirely confident that I'll get, get the job done, um, but there's no way that I can really start letting that take over the mind. Thomas also asks, do you ever get proper nutrition or have you just been running on gummy bears these days? I haven't had gummy bears for a long time, actually, although I do love gummy bears. And, uh, the, you know, I've got Huel. Big shout out to Huel for my sponsor because they are, that is my main source of proper nutrition. And without that, brown bread. So, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm doing all right. I like a Huel. Yeah. You said yesterday that you literally think you'd be dead if it wasn't for Huel. Yeah, I think it's a good chance. Yeah. I mean, that is one hell of a shout out. Yeah, it's, it's true. Yeah. We'll get to that because you've got two really nice stories about Stephen and, and George. So we yeah. can definitely get to that because that's, they're genuinely really nice. Um, okay. Next page of questions we have. Zachary asks, Alaska to Argentina or Argentina to Alaska? I mean, I kind of feel like that's the same trip, but I guess what end would you rather start with? I don't think that's that impressive. Argentina to Alaska. It's longer than Africa. Yeah, but if you get uh, like if you ah, uh, it's impressive. It's impressive, but I think if I was going to look at that, I'd be like pole to pole. You know, like it's Argentina to Alaska, fine. But pole to pole, that's proper. You know, that's a proper mission. Though. I guess that's probably like seventy to eighty percent of it. So you may just as well finish it. Exactly. Do it, don't do it off. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, there's quite a few questions about the Algeria visa. This will be out in about two days, so I don't know if you want to get a, give any updated feelings on that situation. Yeah. Uh, so Algeria, no confirmed visa yet. Obviously, we put the message out a few days ago and everyone banded around it so, like, incredibly, really. Um, and we've got a good, good few leads that we're working on and we're confident that we're going to get something sorted, but nothing concrete to announce yet so hold tight i'm about to butcher this question i think in terms of pronouncing the person's name and okay. the question so uh i'm excited Sh sheila sir sheila sir one 
Have you tried uh, Cebu Gen, Senegal's national dish yet? I don't believe so. Cebu Gen, do we know what that is? No idea. Cebu Gen. I might just be butchering the pronunciation that Maybe badly. we should send Gustavo on a little mission to get to source some. Mm. I'd be interested to see what it's saying. Yeah. Okay, cool. We'll get back to you on that. Um, Vasos Philippe asks, night shifts for the Sahara? Question mark. Keen, actually, keen. Um, I'll probably be in the Sahara for quite a lot of Ramadan, so um, might just make sense to do a bit more night shifts at, just because things are likely to be closed during the day a lot, and also the sun's well hot during the day, isn't it? So night shift makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday was fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Can I okay. just that question. Not night shifts, morning shift. Dawn Patrol. Yeah. Uh, such a such a cameraman. He's just obsessed with sunrise shots. Yeah. Is that is that why you want the sunrise shots? Uh, only. I think it's also uh, uh, it's a lot cooler for us to run in yeah. early morning in the desert. In the real desert, because we're not really into the thick of it yet. I think you'll probably want to shift to early morning run. We'll see, man. We'll we'll see. I, I'm I'm pretty well heat adapted at this point, so running in heat's not even that bad, especially when it's dry heat. Mm. Yeah, you're used to that humidity. It's just getting drier, isn't it? Yeah. The only trouble is my nose is butchered. Don't know if you've had that problem being. Out I've yet. been snotting sand out my nose yeah. ever since yesterday. Yeah, it's bad news. Like the the vehicles were literally driving on the wrong side of the road to come right next to us to like splash sand up. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not fun. No, it was a bit mean, really. Yeah. A bit mean from the locals. Okay, next question. Sam asks, what is your resting heart rate? Don't actually know. Um, the lowest I've recorded it at was 30. <laughs> That's low. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Proper low. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jacob asks, what is the biggest difference between your expectations, I'm guessing of Africa, uh, and the reality of the trip? interested probably need more time to think about that to be fair um the biggest difference between my expectations and reality we <sighs> get a couple couple of simpler ones in and come back yeah 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 that's a deep question yeah um, okay, Zoe says, I finished week three of Couch to 5K. I can join Russ. Right. Hopefully. I'm working on something to try and get loads of people out to the finish line, make it like really easy for people to come out to Tunisia and everyone can run for the last day with me. Um, but that's still in progress at the moment, so nothing concrete on that. But it would be uh, great to get as many people out to the finish line as possible. We've also got plans for that as well, Elia. I love that. Yeah. Worst case, if you can't join Russ in Tunisia, we will have a London-based announcement very soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, um, Oscar asks, have you ever been tempted to shave the beard in the heat? No, not once. Love it. Not even once. I love the commitment to the answer, simple. Uh, I can't ask you that one. How has it been running so much time inside your own head? And that's from... Unleashed Athletic, who quick shout out to, they did send some stuff and said, we'd love to just give you some clothes. However, it didn't arrive at my house in time. So Unleashed Athletic, yeah, thank you very much. And um, how has it been spending so much time inside your own head on the daily running? Um, sometimes very enjoyable, sometimes very problematic. But um, I generally really just enjoy being able to think so i'm quite happy with it most of the time yeah i love that you got good at it yeah nice and yeah i've done it a lot yeah <laughs> practice right. yeah right we've got a few more fun ones to, to finish up so uh tim asks what does it feel like to be such a fucking legend <laughs> i don't even know how to answer that what does it feel like to be such a fucking legend um Thanks for the compliment. What was it, Tim? It was Tim. Tim, cheers for the compliment, Tim. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, did I? Just guess it feels looking all. 
Another day, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Tim also asked, what's been your favorite country on the mission so far? And you might not want to answer it until you're done, but what's been your least favorite country on the mission so far? Favorite country, I think, was Namibia and Ghana are both up there for me. Really enjoyed both of them. Had loads of interactions with people. Um, everyone was really kind. Loads of people went out of the way to help us a lot. Um, both beautiful countries as well. Uh, least favorite uh, um, for me personally, and I only ran for a very small part of it, so I'm in no position to judge the entire country. But I didn't really enjoy my time in DRC very much, which is the smartest answer. Yeah. yeah, I think that's understandable. But I love how you frame that with didn't spend that much time. There. Yeah. Um, okay, we've got a couple more, a couple more fun ones. So, Russ. What are you drinking? Because you should never pay for another pint in England ever again. <laughs> That's from uh, D and D. I'm not even sure. I don't know if it's too much of a question, but I guess what is your favourite drink? And can this man get you one when you're back? I guess alcoholic beverage of choice. I think if I'm in party mode, I'm keen for a little strawberry daiquiri, you know, sophisticated geezer. Uh, Good shout. Uh, but just like straight up, everyday alcoholic beverage. Be a Stella Artois for me. That's simple, man. Yeah. Um, but then, in, on any other occasion, just grab me a perfect head. You know what I mean? They are good. Good. Really good. Apple and raspberry one. Okay, so yeah. Jacob asks Russ, are you an alien? I don't think so. But I'm Maybe open to be approved otherwise. As you said earlier, you don't even know if you're in the right physical and mental state to really make yeah. these correct assumptions exactly. anyway, so you could be. Yeah. Subjective, objective, what does it even mean? You know, is it all not just here? It's a fugazi. We've got, there's a few other questions, so shout out to everyone that's asked one, but I know we're running out of time and also some of them are quite similar. I'm going to end on what was probably my favourite question from Tim again, and he says, Russ, loads of people look up to you, but who do you look up to? Who do I look up to? Wow. God. Yeah. Want to elaborate on that at all, or does that feel good? <laughs> I think that feels good to be fair. People just make out of that what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in that case, mate, that is 99% of the questions. As I said, a couple are kind of similar. Thank you so much to everyone that asked the question. And Ralph, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity Cheers, to brother. come over and, and join with you. Obviously, being from the same hometown, it's just additionally inspirational to come here, see what you're doing. We've ran one day with you. I'm battered. <laughs> you're about to go again. So, mad respect. Next is our matching all the donations from people that uh, in, um, donate into the fundraiser from us. So, if you do donate to Russ's fundraiser and you're also following us, please make sure you send us a print screen off your donation and we will match that. Oh, so, great. thank you so much again, Russ and the team for hosting us and we really hope you got something from this episode nice one sweet as boys right, mate thank you so much wicked sick no, great interview man class